Hello everyone and thanks for tuning into the Financial Investor Channel. My name is Brent and today we're going to be doing part two of our 401k sort of screening. Uh, the very first time we talked about what's a 401k, what is a Roth 401k, the differences between them and their similarities. Today we're going to be covering my six step process on how to begin investing in your 401k or your Roth 401k smart, you know, as smart as can be. So let's go ahead and dive into it. If you're brand new to my channel, thank you guys for checking out my videos. Hit the subscribe button on the bottom right hand. Uh, just click on my logo, my icon, subscribe to my channel. I put out weekly stock market, dividend, financial videos. So uh, subscribe for that. Now, uh, as always, I, you know, I always talk about this prior to investing. Always pay off your high interest debt. This could be your school, your school loans, your credit cards. I know people that are in debt for $25,000 for their school loans, or they have these credit cards that are sitting at 18% and they only have eight, uh, you know, a thousand or so on them, but a thousand dollars at 18%, that's $180 that you're getting hit against you versus the seven to 8%, you know, seven to 10% you may get while investing in the stock market. So you always want to pay off your high interest debt. This includes your, you know, before investing in a 401k, Roth 401k, pay these off because it's gonna it's not gonna affect it too much um so second thing create your rainy day fund i made a video in an article i believe on what a rainy day fund is it's essentially just expenses for three to six months this can cover your rent your mortgage food water utilities basically the essentials that you will need to survive in case of an emergency so let's go ahead and get into it choosing between the pre-tax 401k or your Roth 401k is one of the steps in here, and I've already covered that. Uh, that's you can click on the article; it's there. It kind of links it over. Kind of helps you decide whether you want to invest in your 401k or your Roth 401k. So here we are: six steps to begin investing in your 401k or your Roth 401k. Step number one: read the capital accumulation plan, or sometimes it's just the summary plan of your uh, the summary plan description. You want to read everything inside this plan. This will tell you if your company does any profit sharing, if they do any matching contributions, if they offer, if they do any like weird fees, if they allow you to uh, create a, you know, create a loan from your 401k or Roth 401k, if you can do a loan off of it. Uh, one of the key areas that I always have people check out is the vesting schedule. Now, some people, a lot of people don't know that you can take a loan against your 401k, I wouldn't recommend it unless it's something critical. Maybe you're making like a down payment on a rental. Again, you would want to get with a financial advisor or a tax advisor on that. Um, I am not neither, you know, I'm neither one of those. So always talk to your financial advisor on that. But I know some people that have done that in the past. Uh, the One of the main things that I missed myself was the vesting schedule. I was with my last company for three years. I was only eligible for 60% of the matching contributions that they made towards me. So that means if they paid out $10,000 in my 401k, I only got to keep 6,000 of those and was able to roll, uh, roll over 6,000 of their matching contributions into my IRA or my, my uh, current company's 401k program. So always take a look at the vesting schedule. They can be increments of say 20, 20% for one year, 40% for two years, 60% uh, for three years, 80% for four years, and then 100% for five. But uh, normally it's like three to seven years. So check out what your guys' vesting schedule is. And that'll essentially be done while you're reading your plan summary. Step number two, decide between your 401k and your Roth 401k. You wanna know the differences between these. So essentially the pre-tax 401k, this money comes out, it's, it's, it's tax, it's taxable income that's contributed to your 401k. It's uh, contributed prior to being taxed, meaning that you will be taxed on it eventually down the road. So as soon as you hit 59 and a half and begin, you begin taking contributions, your interest, your dividends, your capital gains will all be taxed at your current, your future income bracket. So definitely want to decide if you're making more money right now, if you're sitting in the 38% bracket right now, and in the future you might be getting down into the 15 or lower percent bracket, you may go for the uh, pre-tax 401k. I know some people that, you know, they're married, they make more than, I believe it's 144,000. So they sit in a very high bracket, but if they both put in the full amount, 
the $18,000, they knock out $32 from their summary and they're able to lower themselves into a lower tax bracket right now, whereas in the future they might be more settled, so they might be in a lower tax bracket in the future. And then Roth 401k, I'm in a pretty low tax bracket right now, so uh, my ideal thing is going for the Roth 401k, Roth IRA. I love the idea of having a tax sheltered area where I can grow my dividends, my interest, my capital gains, 100% tax free because I don't know what my future, uh, you know, I don't know what the future plan is for me, but I don't plan on being on a lower income tax bracket in the future. And I also don't know if universal healthcare is going to be coming in the future. So the Roth 401k, essentially you're, you're getting taxed right now. You pay taxes on your money that's being distributed into your Roth 401k. And then after 15 and a half, all your dividends, your capital gains, your interest will be tax free. And that's very nice. So that is step number, uh, step number two is, you know, deciding between your Roth IRA or Roth 401k or your 401k. Step number three is determine if your employer will match contributions. Now, check the plan. Make sure that the employer does, you know, have some sort of matching. Their plans vary very differently. Some match up to 3%, match, some match up to 5%, some match even more. So always do your research on your matching. Some people also do like a, they'll do like a one-fourth of whatever you match. So if you match in 8%, they'll put in 2 some people do half and, and it's weird sometimes. So always check that out. That should be, if you read your plan, you'll know exactly how much they match. And my company that I'm going to, that I'm in right now, my company offers a com employee match. So I will be participating in my 401k. Otherwise I may choose to put my money in somewhere else. But in this case, they do do so, some sort of a matching program. So I will be contributing to my 401k, Roth 401k plan. Step number four is figure out exactly how much you want to invest. And this kind of goes back to, does your employer match? And if they do, uh, determining exactly how much you want to contribute to your 401k is probably one of the most difficult steps. And I always suggest doing the matching portion. That way you know what your limit is. Um, you, you know, of course you don't want to overdo it and you don't want to be paying or taking any money out because if you do withdraw money out of your 401k, you'll get hit with a penalty of 10%. Also, you'll have to pay capital appreciation, taxes on your capital appreciation, any dividends that you made in there. Whereas if you invest in your Roth 401k and you do need to pull money out, you've already paid taxes on it. So you don't, you won't get hit with any sort of penalty and you won't have to pay taxes because you've already been taxed on it. Now, if they didn't have a matching program for my company, then I would not opt to do a 401k. I already do my Roth IRA. I have my thrift savings plan. I have my non-retirement account. I have other investment options that I'm interested in getting into. I'm interested in getting the real estate. I have uh, silver and some other materials. I have bonds. So I have a variety of investment options that I'm already kind of doing. So if my company did not do a matching contribution, I probably wouldn't go that route. But because they do, it's free money. And I always am willing to invest to get free money. Step number five is choosing your investment. Now, always log on to your benefits website. Opt to customize your selection. My default was a, a much higher mutual fund than if I had just gone in there and customized it and looked at what their options were. So you will normally have a uh, selection of options from guaranteed accounts, money market accounts, target date funds, asset allocation funds, bonds, large cap, mid and small cap stocks, and then some international stocks. So those are some that were inside my plan. And um, take a look at what's inside yours because that is going to be important. Step number six is implement your screening process. So you've already reviewed all the ETFs, the mutual funds, the bonds, the um, the market, the money market accounts that are within your account that you can target and invest in. So what do I screen for myself? You know, I always want to take a look at what are the annual operating expenses. These are the costs of the investment company 
um, you know, what it costs the operate <laughs> the investment company to operate over the course of the year. So these are usually pretty low in general. So these can be maybe point point zero two to say point two. So they range, but it's essentially money that it takes for that specific ETF or mutual fund to just be operated throughout the course of a year. The, the main important thing, I, I didn't list these in any specific order, but I would always take a look at the expense ratio. This is a very important one because this will affect you. It may not be, it will be small right now, but it will impact you a lot over time. So the expense ratio is an annual fee based on the value of its assets over the course of the year. While it may be small, it can impact you over time. Now, one of my friends at work, he said, you know, I don't care about the expense ratio, you know, as long as they're going to get me some sort of a good deal. And I'm sure he does. He's not one of the ones that really goes in there and customizes it. I told them, go ahead. I sent him this article, told them to take a look at how to implement your screening process. And um, uh, these ranges can be very small from 0.02 to like 0.72%. So these are pretty big differences. Uh, number three, how long is the specific fund or, you know, the mutual fund ETF been around? I want something that has some history. I want it to have been through some sort of a downturn in the stock market, have been through like 08, 09, or the 2000s era. So I need at least like a 5, 10 year average to kind of keep up with the S&P 500. I want something that will have 7, 10% capital gains, and then also have some sort of a dividend yield in those downward turns. You know, I want something that will still be generating some income that can be reinvested into that specific fund. And then what percentage when, you know, once I've chosen like a breakdown of like two to four mutual funds or ETFs, I want to take a look at what's inside them. I, I want to know what percentage of stocks or what stocks they're actually invested in, percentage of bonds, if they have any international stocks, if they have any physical materials or just kind of money held on the side, etc. So what does it, what exactly does it hold? And then down here on the bottom, I included some averages of some mutual funds versus ETF. So the average mutual fund, mutual fund expense ratio is around 0.74 in 2010, which means for every $1,000 that you're investing, you're getting charged $7.40 in annual fees. Now, you may think that's not a lot right now, but if you invest $5,000, which is 5% of $50,000, then you're going to be hit with what five and seven thirty-five dollars of annual fees, and this is only your very first year. Imagine two years, then you're getting hit with seventy dollars, and four years, one hundred and forty dollars. Imagine your portfolio has finally reached a hundred thousand dollars, and you're getting hit with over uh, seven hundred and forty dollars in just annual fees. This is money that you would rather have invested working for you instead it's working against you. And this is an average ETF expense ratio is around 0.24% in 2016, which again means for every thousand, it would cost you roughly $4.40 in annual fees. Now I saw some very nice ones. You know, I saw some mutual funds that had some pretty high expense ratios. And I'll actually be covering that in another video, I went through the whole process and I've actually picked out what specific fund I'm investing in my for, my Roth 401k and that's coming up next week and uh, I'll kind of be covering that. Now consider the following. We have an employer who's currently 30 years old. He earns $50,000 per year and he wants to retire somewhere around the age of 65. If the employer matches 5% of the person's salary, Check out the big difference that additional contributions can make in his or her final retirement egg, nest egg. So here's the base, here's kind of like my view right here. Um, I put in 5% of my salary, my employer puts in 5%. For a total salary of 10%, that would be roughly, that would earn me $750,000 at year 65. This isn't including dividends. So when I was doing these calculations, I didn't include dividends. So this, these numbers will be much higher. If you put in 6% and your employer match five again, uh, employer match is capped out at five because that's pretty normal average for a lot of companies. So if I bump it up to 6%, that's now 11% of my total salary. That's 825,000. So automatically there's another 50,000. And then if I bump up to 7%, that's another 75,000 for over 900,000. 
And then if I bump it up to 8%, that's 975,000. So the difference starts off right around uh, this whole 7% range is a really nice factor where you're starting to get some uh, more growth. But again, this is if you don't, this isn't including dividends. If you choose an ETF or a mutual fund that has a say yield of what 2.5%, that's going to be earning you quite a bit more over the course of that 35 years. Now, I and you know I put in a calculator here on this website. This article is going to be in the description below. If you guys are interested in kind of taking a look at this a little bit yourself, if you have any other information that's useful. So, as an example, someone who makes sixty thousand dollars a year and they put in five percent, the employer matches five percent, and their estimated rate of return is say seven. We're just going to put seven percent, and then we have. Um, I would like to retire in thirty years. So let's calculate that out. It loads up. So when I retire, my 401k will roughly have $609,000, uh, $609,985. So that's just my 401k. I also have my Roth IRA. I also have my non-retirement account. I have my bonds and some other uh, investment options. So this is just one of your investment vehicles that you should be using to invest in your guys' future. And um, that is essentially it for this video. I do have the snippet at the very end as a disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor or tax professional. The information provided is my opinion and anything in this article is really just, I pulled a lot of information off. It's how I would be investing in, in my Roth 401k or in my 401k and some of my thought process that kind of goes into it. Again, if there's anything out there that you guys have any, um, if you guys would like to see something else or if you see any information here that you might might be beneficial to somebody else to have included in here, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions over anything that was covered here, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. I want to thank everyone for watching up until this point. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button below. Hit the button on the bottom right hand corner to subscribe to my channel for future financial videos. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time. Have a great day guys. Bye bye.